In this lecture, we're going to talk about solving trigonometric equations. So let's start by talking about the basic strategy for solving a trigonometric equation. The first thing that we're going to want to do is get the trigonometric function or functions by, them by itself on one side of the equation. We can accomplish this by using trigonometric identities, substitution factors, or other algebraic operations. Once we isolate the trigonometric function, we can use the inverse trig function to undo the trig function and solve for the unknown angle. Next, we can use the unit circle or calculator to evaluate the inverse trig function value. Keep in mind that coterminal angles may also satisfy the equation. And finally, we can generate or list the solutions that match the given conditions for our problem. So let's start by solving a problem that just wants a general solution. So there's no requirement or condition on our solutions. So this example says find a general formula for the solution of cosine of theta equals negative root 3 over 2. And once you find that formula, list six solutions. So we start with our equation cosine of theta equals negative root 3 over 2. Since the trig function is already isolated, the next thing we want to do is take the inverse cosine of both sides to cancel out the cosine. So the inverse cosine and cosine cancel each other out, leaving us with theta equals the inverse cosine of negative root 3 over 2. Now negative square root of 3 over 2 is one of our common values that is present on the unit circle, so we can use the unit circle to evaluate this inverse cosine. Remember, the x-coordinate represents the cosine of an angle, so we want to find the angles that have an x-coordinate of negative th root 3 over 2. And the first one that we see is going to be at 5 pi over 6, and the second one is going to be at 7 pi over 6. So we get theta equals 5 pi over 6, or 7 pi over 6, but remember, any revolution around the circle will generate a new angle that also has that same cosine value. So to make this a general solution, we'll add 2 times pi times k to both of our solutions. Now, 2 pi represents a revolution, and k will represent the number of revolutions. So again, each time we make a revolution around the unit circle, we'll get a new angle that satisfies this condition of cosine being negative root 3 over 2. So we can use the general formula to generate solutions. If we start with k equals 0, we get 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. If we let k equal 1, we'll plug 1 in for k, so that'll give us 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi. If we create a common denominator, that'd be 5 pi over 6 plus 12 pi over 6, which gives us 17 pi over 6. And then we also get 19 pi over 6 doing the same thing with our 7 pi over 6 value. And similarly, if we let k equal 2, we plug 2 in for k, and if we simplify, we'll get 29 pi over 6 and 31 pi over 6. So this represents six solutions of the equation cosine of theta equals negative root 3 over 2, and we, generate, we generated those six solutions using the general solution. So let's look at another example. This time we want to solve the equation 1 minus the cosine of theta equals 1 half on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we'll start with our trigonometric equation 1 minus the cosine of theta equals 1 half. We'll subtract 1 from both sides of the equation, giving us negative cosine of theta equals negative 1 half. Then we divide both sides by negative 1, giving us the cosine of theta equals 1 half. Now that we have the cosine of theta isolated, we can take the inverse cosine of both sides. So the inverse cosine of the cosine of theta will equal the inverse cosine of 1 half. The inverse cosine and the cosine will cancel each other out, leaving us with theta equals the inverse cosine of 1 half. And again, 1 half is one of the common values that we would see on a unit circle, so we can use the unit circle to evaluate this. Remember, cosine is represented by the x-coordinate, so we want to find the values that have an x-coordinate of 1 half. So the first one that I see on the unit circle is pi over 3, and the second one that I see is 5 pi over 3. And again, we want to accommodate for any revolutions that may occur, so we're going to write a general solution of pi over 3 plus 2k pi, and 5 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. Now we'll use different values of k to generate solutions until we, until we get solutions that are not in our interval from 0 to 2 pi. 
So if k equals 0, we get our original values, pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3, and those are both within our interval. If k equals 1, we get 7 pi over 3 and 11 pi over 3, but both of those are greater than 2 pi, so those will not be included in our solution set. And we can stop generating solutions now, because everything else will be bigger than that. So our overall solution will just be pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. Alright, let's look at another example. This time we want to solve the sine of 2 theta equals the square root of 3 over 2 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we start with our equation, the sine of 2 theta equals root 3 over 2. Since the sine is already isolated by itself, we can take the inverse sine of both sides, giving us the inverse sine of the sine of 2 theta equals the inverse sine of root 3 over 2. The inverse sine will cancel out the sine, giving us 2 theta equals the inverse sine of root 3 over 2. Now again, root 3 over 2 is one of the common values on our unit circle, so we can use the unit circle to evaluate this inverse sine. We want to find out where the y coordinate, which represents sine, is equal to root 3 over 2. And so the first value that I see where y is root 3 over 2 is pi over 3, and the second one is 2 pi over 3. So to accommodate for any revolutions around the unit circle, we'll use those values and add 2k pi. So 2 theta will equal pi over 3 plus 2k pi, or 2 pi over 3 plus 2k pi. And to get theta by itself, we'll divide both sides of the equation by 2, and that's going to give us theta equals pi over 6 plus k pi, since we have to divide both terms by 2, and pi over 3 plus k pi as well. Now we'll start generating solutions. We'll start with k equals 0. When k equals 0, we get pi over 6 and pi over 3. These are both in our interval from 0 to 2 pi, so those will be answers. When k equals 1, we get 7 pi over 6 and 4 pi over 3. Those also are both less than 2 pi, so those will be solutions to our problem. And when k equals 2, we get 13 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 3. And both of those are greater than 2 pi, so they don't fall in our interval, so we won't include those in our solution set. And we can stop here. Next we want to do an example where we're going to solve equations using a calculator. So our example says use a calculator to solve cosine of theta equals negative 0.2 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. We start with our equation cosine of theta equals negative 0.2. Since the cosine of theta is already isolated we can take the inverse cosine of both sides. So the inverse cosine of the cosine of theta equals the inverse cosine of negative 0.2. Inverse cosine and cosine will cancel each other out, leaving us with theta equals the inverse cosine of negative 0.2. And if we put that in our calculator, the inverse cosine of negative 0.2 gives us theta equals 1.77, if we round off to two decimal places. Be sure that your calculator is in radian mode for this problem, because the interval that they gave us from 0 to 2 pi represents radians. So our theta is 1.77 radians. Now the calculator is only going to give us one value. It's possible that there are other values that would also satisfy the equation, and we need to figure those out ourselves. So if we think about theta equals 1.77, that's just a little bit past pi over 2. So if I graph it, it lives in the second quadrant. Now where else is cosine negative? So we know that cosine is also negative in the third quadrant. So since cosine is negative in the third quadrant as well, there's going to be an angle that's similar to the angle we just found that lives in the third quadrant. And so if we look at the graph here, we can find that angle by subtracting what we just found, 1.77, from 2 pi. So the second angle is going to be 2 pi minus 1.77. And if we plug that into our calculator, we'll get 4.51. So the two angles that are solutions to this problem on the interval from 0 to 2 pi are 1.77 and 4.51. Let's do another example where we solve an equation with a calculator. This time we want to use a calculator to solve the cotangent of theta equals 2 on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So we start with our equation cotangent of theta equals 2. We don't have a cotangent button on our calculator, so we need to rewrite this in terms of something that we do have. 
Now we know that cotangent and tangents are reciprocals, so if we take the reciprocal of both sides of this equation, we'll get the tangent of theta equals one half. If we take the inverse tangent of both sides of the equation, we'll have inverse tangent of tangent of theta equals the inverse tangent of one half. The inverse tangent and the tangent cancel each other out, leaving us with theta equals the inverse tangent of one half. And if we evaluate that in our calculator, theta equals the inverse tangent of one half, we'll get theta equals 0 0.46. And again, our calculator only gives us one answer, and it's possible that we have more than one, so we need to kind of visualize what this looks like. Theta equals 0 0.46 lives in the first quadrant, so it looks something like this. But we also know that the tangent is positive in the third quadrant. So there's going to be a similar angle that lives in the third quadrant, which will have a tangent value of one half. So to find this angle, we can take the left-hand side of the x-axis, that's equal to pi, and add the measure of the angle we just found. So a second angle will be pi plus 0 0.46. And if we add that together in our calculator, we'll get that theta is approximately 3.61. So the two values of theta that give us a cotangent of two would be 0 0.46 and 3.61. Now let's look at an example where we're going to solve a trig equation that's quadratic in form. So this time we want to solve two times the cosine squared of theta plus the cosine of theta minus one equals zero on the interval from zero to two pi. So we'll start with our equation, two times the cosine squared of theta plus the cosine squared of theta minus one equals zero. We're gonna use a substitution factor to change this into a quadratic equation, so let's let u equal the cosine of theta. If we replace cosine of theta in our problem with u, that'll give us two u squared plus u minus one equals zero. And we can factor this quadratic out, so two u minus one times u plus one equals zero. And then we set each factor equal to zero, so two u minus one equals zero, or u plus one equals zero. And if we find the solution for each factor, we get u equals one half, or u equals negative one. So replacing our substitution, that means that the cosine of theta equals one half, or the cosine of theta equals negative one. If we take the inverse cosine of both sides of these equations, we'll get theta equals the inverse cosine of one half, and theta equals the inverse cosine of negative one. Both of these values are common on our unit circle, so we can use the unit circle to evaluate the inverse cosines. If I start with one half, I want to find where the x-coordinates are equal to one half, and I see that'll be at pi over three, and down at five pi over three. And for the inverse cosine of negative one, I find where the x-value equals negative one, and that will be pi. So my solution set will be the angles pi over three, five pi over three, and pi. Let's look at another example. This time we're going to do a trig equation that involves identities. So we want to solve the equation cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta plus the sine of theta equals zero. Remember the Pythagorean identity says sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. And so if we solve this for cosine squared, we would get cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. So let's replace the cosine squared in our problem with that. That's gonna give us one minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta plus sine of theta equals zero. If we simplify by combining like terms, we'll get negative two sine squared theta plus sine of theta plus one equals zero. Now we have an equation that's quadratic in form, so let's use the substitution u equals sine of theta. And if we make that substitution, we'll get negative two u squared plus u plus one equals zero. We can factor that out to get two u plus one times a negative u plus one equals zero. If we set each factor equal to zero and solve, we'll get u equals negative one half, or u equals one. And replacing our substitution will give us sine of theta equals negative one half, or sine of theta equals one. We take the inverse sine of both sides of the equation, we'll get theta equals the inverse sine of negative one half, or theta equals the inverse sine of one, a negative one half and one are values on our unit circle, so we can use the unit circle to evaluate these inverse functions. So since we're dealing with sine, we wanna find where the y coordinate equals negative one half, and that's gonna give us 
7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And we also want to find why the, where the y coordinate equals 1 and the y coordinate will equal 1 at pi over 2. So our solution set will be theta equals 7 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6, or pi over 2.